Rumbling. Rumbling. Destroying your real estate. Real estate. Trust district. Aaron is now the one destroying houses. It's alright, you gotta crack a few eggs to make breakfast, you know what I mean? Yeah, call, call a very direct attention to the house thing. Yeah, your eggs, etc. Remember the time when Aaron destroyed all the world's conflict and ended war? I remember. No, that's not what it means. You stop it. Stop bastardizing Erwin's legacy. This is not honoring the, the past. Oh my god. Ima just imagine that. Aaron's off murdering everyone in the biggest genocide imaginable. Meanwhile, the homies protecting destroys itself through civil war. Annie's out. Annie is loose. She's walking as quick as she can to the nearest computer to binge watch the last couple seasons. You don't know, Annie. You don't know what's happened. I imagine you're very scared and confused. Oh, Annie gets thrown. In a twist, it took four seasons. Yeah, she's in, a, in bad, bad shape. My old friend Hitch. Alright, I'm not gonna lie. I thought that was Hitch, but I wasn't sure. She looks really different in this studio's animation. But it's really lucky that Hitch was the one that she ran into. Hitch is just a different person now after everything she's been through. Everyone just hold on a damn minute. Aaron is destroying the world right now. He may be the only person left with Titan powers. <laughs> yeah, and he's back. Wish on the butterfly. Sunset. Night is falling on Paradiso. Oh, what? Oh, what? That saves a lot of time. A lot of catch up time. Oh, she knows at least a certain amount of it. <laughs> That's very convenient. But also great. We can just jump right into it. Let's go. She also heard the announcement. Do you hear that sound? It's really happening. And he's like, I'm not going to let being stuck in a crystal stop me from character development. Alright, I gotta pause for a minute here. <laughs> what was so important <laughs> that you had to interrupt? Oh, you don't want to get kissed? Alright. <laughs> Bye. How much things have spun in place in so many ways. The fact that the soldiers felt they were justified in anything. Destroying the walls, causing the deaths of lots of people. Murdering their friend Marcel, being the enemies of humanity, destroying the wall. To now, the person with that philosophy and actions being Aaron. And I guess also the people who are rallying behind him. You know, that anything is justified. And literally being the ones to bring down the walls and destroy houses, just like Aaron's house was destroyed. <laughs> So speaking of Annie and the soldiers, I feel like this is an issue that keeps coming up for me in discussions about the show. Even after last episode where I feel the show made sort of a definitive statement on how it feels this ends justify the means idea. Even ignoring the fact that there are probably ways to engage in aggression with the other world that are not at the level of total genocide, there are still a whole bunch of issues with this idea for me. A big one of them being, it's nearly impossible to predict the way things will actually play out. It's probably simpler in the show because just by nature it's going to be a more flat version of the world, but in reality things are just so endlessly complex, you you never know if the thing you're trying to do, the ends you're trying to reach, will be reachable, even though you've crossed a lot of lines in terms of the means. And that's only in the present. It gets even more complicated and even less clear if you think about that over time. Let's say 5, 10, 20, 100, 1,000 years. The soldiers were under that same philosophy. That's sort of what Annie is talking about, where they recognized the threat, which turned out to be correct. That's part of the significance, I think, for Annie talking about her original mission. They launched on this expedition to protect Marley and did all these terrible things and killed Aaron's mom and caused massive famine that caused the 
death of Armin's father and uh, countless other people, all in the name of preventing the very thing that's happening now. And they prevented nothing, but certainly have a lot of blood on their hands. Back to the present one, it's not clear that Aaron's plan will succeed. I mean, it looks pretty good for him right now, admittedly, but there's a lot of things that can intervene. And again, that's only this moment and only the present focus. It's also possible that this whole island will implode due to the chaos this is causing and the power vacuum of all the things that have destabilized the country. And then also consider the fact that this is going to confirm the bias about Eldians and could conceivably lead to their destruction in the future if anyone survives. So given the fact that things are not as linear as we'd like to believe they are, there are only a couple of things you can rely on. One is the immediate moment that you have and doing the best thing you know how to do in that moment. The other is relying on principles and understanding that there are lines you, you don't cross and and that to begin with, the juice may not be worth the squeeze, but you may not even get the juice, if you know what I'm saying. Specific to the challenges the Eldians face, it's not inconceivable to me that they fight a war and win. It's not like there's no precedent for tiny, seemingly powerless countries making a stand against large empires. And I don't mean to trivialize it, there is a very good chance that they get wiped out, but that chance exists no matter what. That, I think, is sort of what makes that heroic. You know, being heroic and striving for high values doesn't really mean anything if it's easy. The question is, what do you do when challenged? Do you give in to what's convenient because you're scared, right? Do you justify the things you know to be wrong because you're unwilling to face the difficulties of doing the things you know to be right. And this is important to me not because of the show and not solely because of questions of how to navigate world affairs, but even in personal life. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've faced temptation and justified that temptation to get what I want and ended up not getting the thing I wanted anyway and sort of being left with the knowledge that I had compromised something of myself that I could never get back for a reward that never came. I'm pretty confident that everyone has the experience doing the wrong thing for the right cause, only to have that cause never materialize, and in many cases to backfire and make things so much worse. So if we can't make that happen on a very tiny individual level, where all the elements are sort of within our field of view, what possible chance is there for something that involves this many variables with this many people and this many casualties? Especially considering the fact that the harm and damage that it can cause is exponentially greater and worse than anything we could possibly experience. You trained me. Well, he did a great job with half of that. <laughs>。Yeah, but we know he came around. You know he changed during his time with her. <laughs> well, you don't like flashbacks, Hitch? You're in the wrong show. Insects are the real, real victims of the show. They just don't, don't have any chance. Seems like it's faded. Does this mean a return to Marley? That small gesture might have been the seed that changed a lot for Annie. Seed of hope. That's really difficult. Wow. Maybe we can skip parts of it, like Marcel, but it's better than nothing. This looks badass suddenly. I know they're walking pretty slowly. They're taking eight episodes to get out of the city. They got these long ass legs, but don't seem to be moving very quickly. What happens when they get to the water? Maybe we'll get a second beach episode with the Colossal Titans. This is another thing I see coming up now and then where it's like, life has no inherent value. Life is worthless. Life is meaningless. It's all just sort of random chaos. I get where that's coming from, but I find it somewhat unsatisfying. I think there is an argument for objective meaning and value in life. But even without having to go into that, I can say that everything is meaningless is unsatisfying simply because it's too easy. And a lot of times what I see in that is not actually a solid argument for it, but rather that meaning has not yet been found. Or even worse, and even more suspect, is it being used as sort of a defense mechanism from having to do the difficult work of picking up the pieces and believing and trusting because it's tough. Like as soon as you assign value to things, you create a risk of pain, you create a risk of non-achievement and failure, you create a risk of betrayal and being burned. But that to me is just sort of the cost of living well. There is no life and there are no good things without potential loss and sacrifice. And one of those sacrifices is responsibility because if you believe that life has meaning and you believe that things can be beautiful, then in a way, you have an obligation to live up to it in some sense and not to slip into this easy and seductive tendency to not have to challenge yourself and to do the things that feel the most gratifying in the moment without any sort of higher thought to it because without meaning, all things become okay. But I know from experience that's not satisfying. In fact, that ends up creating more of the darkness that it seeks to prevent because even people who say that desire, you know, even people who say that have those same scales where they recognize that there are great things out there that they possibly could have. It's just that that would mean a very, very long uphill fight, which is intimidating. 
and so for me Annie could still go a long way towards that but it's better way better and more satisfying than like it doesn't matter no nothing matters no one matters live or die who cares at least she has her father uses a bogus threat not so bogus anymore. Now the rumbling is underway. Destruction of the world is not far off. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I miss the days of, like, crackers and horses. Simpler times. Can you imagine the fear? What do you even do? Yeah, and they don't know. They didn't have the dream. How do you even prove this or try to prove it? That's a good point. If everyone's saying the same thing without communication. But, I don't know. I feel like one of the biggest resistances to this, one of the reasons why they won't believe them, is because they're too scared to believe it. That's actually a really common way of processing things. It's like, this is terrifying, so it can't be true. Deep down, I don't want to accept the implications of this thing, so I reject the thing in its entirety without considering it. You see that a lot when people come to you for advice. It's like, you could fix this thing and they're like oh no i can never fix that thing it's unfixable but in fact few things are unfixable it's probably more like it's scary to think about what it would take to fix it well sucks for the eldians here but these guys sure have a reckoning coming yeah she's going back isn't she we're going back to marley that's how this is gonna go it seems oh he's fighting even though he can't walk so good. Can we talk about Shadows for a second? <laughs> this is actually, of all the many, many ways the show has justified my beliefs. <laughs> this is one of the ones that's most personal to me. I'm talking specifically about Shadows' complex about not being born special and seeing the sort of cloud of failure that hung over his whole life. Around the time I watched that episode, I had a long discussion about it with a very close friend of mine who expressed similar sentiments about how some people are just sort of born lucky or with natural gifts and that that is sort of the basis for success in life. And without those crucial things, you have limited options. And I don't want to say there is no truth to that at all, especially the part about people being born with innate skills having advantages. I mean, people are definitely born with advantages in life, but I think right apart from that idea is that that is somehow a cursed fate. In fact, I think that that idea itself is the curse, if there is one. I know from personal experience that things can turn around really quickly in both directions. Like, things can be going terribly and then suddenly not be so terrible, or even great, and things can be going great and then suddenly become terrible. You sort of only are what you do next, and your past is part of you, but where you are at any given moment takes the vast majority of the emotional weight in how you reflect on your own life, I think. One moment of success, you know, one moment of feeling connected to life and feeling like things are where they should be and you are where you should be and, and liking who you are in that moment has a way of resolving a lot of that instantly. But the more people believe that there's this sort of cloud hanging on them that prevents them from having success, the more that just ends up becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy, further feeding that idea and further inhibiting action towards making anything better or trying to resolve one's own personal problems. And so I love Shadis as this person who just failed and failed, tried and failed again, and was outshone by Erwin, and was outshone by Eren, and who lost his love to Grisha, and time after time after time was just beaten down to the point where he had no value he could collect from within himself. But what did he do with that? He ended up becoming the Shadis of season four, which is amazing. I think that's how people are going to remember Shadis, and that is how Shadis will feel about himself right now, and that will make all those things not worth it necessarily, but take on a very different light. He may not be feeling great at this moment because of the rumbling and, you know, the threat to his life, but he's a totally different person and that comes across instantly to the viewer I think and that kind of thing is there for the taking even if it is invisible to us now it's right ahead of us possibly Shadows could have easily given up and confirmed all of his worst fears but he didn't and so it's been really special and personally relevant for me to watch that transformation <laughs> Bide your time. Oh yeah, Connie. Where's Connie now? Give him a shoulder pad. He responds well to those. It's been a packed couple of hours. When the going gets tough, tough get going. <laughs> you could have left out the upside down part, but okay. At least he didn't call her chicken like Titan. There's a lot of questions. Yeah, <laughs> one thing at a time. 
They're alive. They're just very wet. You just do it the My Hero Academia way. Do the best you can for now. Uh, stop You're derailing yourself. <laughs> or the fruit basket method. You do one piece of laundry at a time. Put one shirt in the basket and then another. It's okay. We're all under a lot of pressure. <laughs> It's been it's been an eventful couple of minutes in our lives. Oh, the, the survivor guilt is coming out. That's not this is not a productive line of thought. It changes nothing. Believe in yourself, Armin. Honor Irwin's legacy by kicking ass. Yeah, yeah. Leave it to Mr. Browse to see that. Connie's conflicted the whole way there. We've had our differences, but <laughs> things changed a little bit for me when you blasted that titan away from me and saved my life. And so begins the Armin and Gabby adventures. That's a pairing I never imagined, but it's kind of cool. Oh, so, so this is continuing. Should have never given this man power. John is in a lot of danger right now. I did. Myself. Little bit of taunting here. I feel like Aaron did a great job playing to his pride. The sad truth is Aaron would betray him too, if it was necessary. Oh no. Most people probably agree. They're all in a lot of danger right now. It's hard to let this stand, but they don't have a lot of power right now. That event really changed them. That's so amazing that this question comes full circle like that, as John John's initial plan. Yeah, I guess it would be tempting, right? It sounds good. It sounds pleasant. But that's not John John. That's not who he is now. There's no going back. He hasn't been the same since that decision in season one when he joined the scouts. Swimming. Lots of swimming. Wrong. Oh no, he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is that conflict I was talking about. Conflict all over Connie's face. Look at all that conflict. <laughs> no, Connie, no. His eyes are literally glowing with purpose. <laughs> Connie, why? You were the emotional anchor. This poor kid, he just keeps getting... On the wrong end of things, he's getting duped. He keeps trusting in people that don't have his interest at heart. Thank goodness, God, he's a nice person. <laughs> oh, it hurts. Oh, he remembers you. He remembers you real well. Oh, after credit scene. Yeah, the Colossal Titans are huge, but not the, the fastest. Damn, that looks different. <gasps> yes! She looks surprisingly dry. It's a alive person. Yes! 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 Finally! Hell yeah! That's what we need right now. So with this season being as crazy as it is, I can't predict what's going to happen, but I can say what I would like to happen or what I think would be narratively beautiful involving Levi. Considering the fact that he always leaned on Erwin, even making a crucial mistake, I guess in a sense, sparing Zeke trying to bring Erwin back, embodying this sort of loose philosophy of like, it doesn't really matter which way you go, just pick one. Constantly being a really capable soldier, but wanting to shy away from the spotlight. How awesome would it be if he rose to a leadership position right now and organized the scattered few people who refuse to live under this insane flish flash tyranny. Hanji also would be great for that, especially as someone who doubted her leadership abilities. The two of them doing that together would also be great. It would be a great tribute to Erwin. But man, does it feel good to see them again. My goodness. <laughs> so it's, 
kind of amazing to say this because it's such a packed crazy episode but it was a little bit low-key <laughs> compared to some of the stuff we've seen recently especially the last episode which, which was just off the walls but absolutely stunning and gripping nonetheless this is pound for pound one of the best things i've ever seen